is David C. Jones, and I'm the Culture Vulture, and today I am here on the busy 4th Avenue talking with Colin Thomas, former actor, published playwright, and theater critic for the Georgia Strait for almost 30 years, the infamous, the spectacular, the eloquent Colin Thomas. I forgot handsome. You did forget handsome. <laughs> You've made up for that now. Okay, cool. You can't see what our hands are doing. <laughs> uh, but it's going to be a lively interview. Um, so, uh, what is the difference between a critic and a reviewer? Um, I don't know what people mean when they say that. I, mean, I think sometimes when people want to be complimentary to me, they say, that, oh, you're a critic, not just a reviewer. Right. So I think what they mean is that I'm not just doing uh, sort of consumer advocacy, saying, you know, thumbs up, thumbs down, right. two, three, four stars or whatever, but that as a critic, I'm actually engaging the content more seriously and the production right. more seriously. Well, and that's the thing, too. Like, sometimes uh, people uh, want critics to uh, sell the show. Oh, Your yeah. job is to sell the show. Oh, yeah, yeah. And, but I, uh, you serve the public, the reader. I think I serve the art. Right. Oh, okay. So, uh, you know, there, uh, yeah, people do want uh, a consumer rating. And I think it's legit to read a review like that if you know who you're reading. Right. So don't just read any critic. My advice would be not to just read any critic and give that opinion any kind of credibility. Right. But if, you know, you've seen a bunch of shows, you've read a bunch of reviews, and you know how your opinions and tastes stack up relative to that critic, to then, him. That, then that makes sense. Yeah. Right? Um, and part of my job as a theater writer is to promote theater and promote shows, but I do that in previews. Yeah. When I'm getting down to a review, I'm actually doing an assessment of that work, and I'm How trying to, you know, articulate my response to that work. How did it came together? And it must be true. One thing I've noticed sometimes going to see a lot of shows is that different audiences like different things, right? Yeah. And yeah. It, it must be hard because sometimes you go, D this this one didn't come together very well, but then. Well, it's always. Go, I thought it was fantastic. Sometimes it's very very tempting to review the audience and say, what the hell were those people laughing at? <laughs> Hey. <laughs> because it wasn't funny to me, and it's and it's a really weird position as a critic yeah. to be in an audience and feel like you're the only person who doesn't like the show because you're because I know that my opinion is going to get a lot of public exposure. Yeah. But all I can do really is be true to my own response. Well, and it's tricky too because opening nights, it, yeah. it's all filled yeah. with friends and family. Yeah. It's friends and families yeah. and people got comps to be there. Yeah. They didn't spend sixty bucks to buy a ticket. Yeah. yeah. So when we go, well, the audience loved it. It's like, well, yeah, it was all your buddies. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So that night they appeared to love it. They, that night they, they, or they had to love it. <laughs> yeah. Right. Yeah. Oh, you were great. Right. Um, now you sometimes, more so than I think any critic that I've ever seen, uh, get a lot of very angry responses to your reviews. So my first off, uh, my first thought is, uh, how does that? How do you feel when you get that? Like, I'm mostly okay with it. I mean, yeah. I'm just kind of, I'm just kind of roll with it because it's been happening for a long time. <laughs> almost 30 years. Yeah, almost 30 years. And I think it partly happens to me more than others because I'm willing to spit it out. I mean, I think that's the real reason that it happens because I don't think a falsely positive review does anybody any favors. It certainly right. doesn't do you a favor if you're buying a ticket to a show that you end up not liking it. It doesn't do you any favors as an artist to be praised for work that's, you know, less than your best work. Right, right. And I think one of the other things is because you are a writer and a, and a very good writer, a, a, a published writer, that you, when you don't like something uh, or you think something has misfired, you can write about it so eloquently that it can hurt. Uh, I remember yeah. you once, uh, I, what was the term, uh, for something that I directed once, you went, uh, I don't know what Jones was thinking here, but it, right? Yeah, <laughs> it yeah, like, yeah, yeah. It was like, ah, yeah, ah. Yeah. <laughs> so, I, uh, yeah, I hope that I, I, I hope that I'm not just like swinging a sword around. No. You know, and no. and, and I, I do have a little internal alarm that mostly works that tells me when I'm being an asshole. Right. So I, I try and pay attention to that. I was writing a review this morning and, you know, it's tempting sometimes to just get carried away with the writing. Right. And just go, oh, we can just slash and burn because it's funny. Right. But I really try not to do that. I think that's an irresponsible thing to do. And I know what it's like to be on the receiving end of criticism. Right. And, you know, it's really interesting because I... Um, I worked for a long time as an actor and a playwright, and then I became a critic, and I was still writing after I became a critic. Yeah, yeah. And how I received reviews really changed. So, I mean, before I became a critic, I used to look to reviews for affirmation of my basic self-worth. Right. <laughs> they loved me. <laughs> they a real problem. Me. And after I became a critic, I started to look for things in reviews that were helpful to me as an artist. Right. And I, you know, that's what I would, you know, encourage artists to do is, you know, look for the things that stick. 
Yeah. You know, and and if nothing sticks, then you know, throw it out. Yeah. Well, and that's that's uh, uh, you know, giving advice. It's uh, you you often qualify your stuff, right? You would say. Uh, you don't just go this didn't work you would go yeah. oh here's yeah, yeah, yeah what didn't work and here's why yeah, i don't yeah, think yeah. it worked and yeah. here's what they would do yeah you don't know um, so, oh, thank, thank you very work. much thank you oh, it's delicious looking it is we'll just leave that right there thank you <laughs> no i think it's my responsibility for sure as a critic to um not do drive-bys you know yeah. to, to to really articulate the reasons uh you know for for my opinions for my responses and you know, the, uh, there is that thing too where uh, if, if, if someone doesn't like, I know I've done this yeah. back when I used to act. When you've praised me, I go, oh, he's so smart. But yeah, when you yeah, criticize yeah. me, I go, yeah, he's an idiot. Yeah. Right, yeah. right. Yeah. And you, yeah. Can't, you can't have it both yeah. ways. Yeah. And the other thing that people do is they look for ways to dismiss you. Yeah. Know, you know, they work for ways to dismiss me as a critic. And my least favorite is being told that I'm too old to understand something. It drives me fucking nuts. <laughs> you just don't get yeah, it. You don't get how, what a genius I am. <laughs> you know, because this is so original. When I, you know, no, honey, I've seen it 45 times. That's why. It's, it's not, not so that original. original. Yeah. Yeah. Now, the thing, too, about being a great writer is you can come up with great lines. I remember uh, 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 with a show that I was in, uh, you, you said uh, this, something that eager to please puppy dog of a show will get ready, Fido. Yeah. And then you plagiarized yourself about four years later yeah. for a show at Richmond Gateway where you yes. use the exact same, yes. Yes. Uh, how yes. scandalous, yes. Yes. how do you answer to this yes. charge of ripping yourself off? You know, sometimes I get that feeling. I often go, that sounds familiar. <laughs> you know, all you can do is search it. I think that's the only time that it's actually happened, I hope. Yeah. But I mean, sometimes you go, oh, God, that is really ringing a bell. But I don't think so. I think it's, <laughs> you know, I think it's fresh. Well, and probably the only person who would know is someone who was at the receiving end of yeah, the first Yeah, well, I, I live in fear, though. I live in fear of that. Yeah. But you've also written very beautiful things. There's a, one that, and maybe you can think of some other praises. We don't have to say the show specific. But I remember you once referred to the Matchmaker uh, Studio 58 production as being like the first uh, fresh strawberry of spring. Oh, there you go. What a poet. <laughs> Such a poet. What a poet. I'm, I'm often really moved by theater. You know, I really love it. And I think it. I love it because it's a fundamentally compassionate art form. You know, yeah. you're imagining yourself into the, somebody else's skin. And I think that's I think that's really moving often. Yeah, yeah. You know, and, and I love and I love just the, the physical exuberance of you know, the vivacity of it and uh, the erotic nature of it and the true nature of the word is being full of life. Like this yeah. another Studio 58 show, uh, their production of Guys and Dolls a few years ago was one of the best shows I've ever seen anywhere in my life. Wow. And it's because it was so full of life. It was crazy vivacious. Right, right, right. And not just uh, happy, joyous. It, it had everything. It was. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, no, there was a level of skill that was phenomenal. And I remember thinking at the time, you know, you couldn't do those performances if you were over 30 because you would die. <laughs> <laughs> uh, now, and recently, and we don't have to be specific or not, or maybe, uh, you modified a review. You, I did. You, you, got a, you, got, uh, uh, you published online now first, both yeah. on your website and yeah. at uh, the uh, Georgia Strait, yeah. and you got a bunch of feedback from yeah. people who took you to task for what they thought was unjust. Yeah, yep. you're referring to my review of Broken Sex Doll, yeah. uh, Virtual Stages production, and I said in the original review that I thought it was sexist and homophobic. It was a generally very, very positive review. But I went, eh, you know, all the uh, sex dolls are female, that's a little sexist, and there's another argument about homophobia. And a whole bunch of people commented online saying, you know, it's not sexist, think about it. And I found some of those arguments really persuasive. And so I thought, you know, what the heck? I mean, they, this gives me an opportunity to change the hard copy of the review. And so I did it. It's the first time that I've, you know, been able to take advantage of that response. Right, getting it out. But yeah, but you know, you know it's, not un it's not uncommon for a review to go there and you go, oh, oh, I wish that I'd, you know, come at that at a slightly different angle or phrase that a little bit differently. You know, even when I submit my reviews, uh, because the uh, timeline is much shorter now, I have to have everything in by noon the next day. And, you know, one, two, three o'clock, I'm writing them and going, oh, can we change that? Oh, can we change that? Can we nibble right. tack a little bit? Right. Um, what do you think? I've run into this recently too, uh, especially community productions or uh, up and coming productions, like yeah. the, uh, where they go, we don't want any reviews because, uh, right? Uh, yeah. Then they don't have to have them. <laughs> you know, that, that's fine by me. There's there are plenty of shows contributing for space. Yeah. Um, I do think 
that I think it's a really good idea for young artists and emerging artists, student artists, to get reviewed uh, and to understand what it's like to have a relationship with a critic, just so you grow up with a mature version of what that is. Mm -hmm. And I don't think that people should necessarily be afraid to be reviewed, but they should understand how to uh, accept a review, how to, how to deal with a review, and how to have a relationship with a uh, critic. I go to uh, Studio 58 every year, at least, and talk to them about uh, the relationship between the artist and the critic. And basically, I figure my job on those days is to show up and just be flawed, right. you know, and uh, just say, this is me, and I'm full of biases, I know what my biases are sometimes, sometimes I probably have biases that I'm not aware of. And you're often very upfront about them too. Oh, well, yeah, yeah, you yeah. have to say as a, as a middle-aged gay man, this yeah, is a yeah, yeah, yeah. white, white man. This yeah. Is, yeah, yeah, absolutely. Um, and that's not about grandizing of yourself, that's more about letting the reader know. Yeah, look, this I've got a perspective. perspective. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, I, and I write in the first person as opposed to the third person, which is given, gives you the voice of God, so I'm, you know, definitely articulating my response, right? Yeah. And I also say to all of those artists, and I would say to any artist, talk to me about the show because you have a better idea about the show than I do so I like it a lot when artists respond to me and it, especially if they respond like I hope that I write in a respectful manner even though you know I, I hope that I with candor but also with respect and I would hope that artists would respond in the same way now what is it what is your, what, what are your thoughts on the state of the arts uh, uh, that sometimes people lament every now and then they'll go the theater is dying the theater is dying and yeah. certainly it's gasping Right yeah. Now. Yeah. Well, the funding situation sucks, and there's like no getting around that, and it's, and it's really appalling. I think it's just really philistine. I think we're really in, living in a philistine age, yeah. uh, increasingly so. And we're, uh, and I think it's, a, I think that's partly about American influence, where Americans kind of regard real culture or fundable culture as being, you know, the opera and the ballet. Right. And then everything other than that is commercial culture. Right. And uh, I think that Canada has had a different model, and I think we're sliding into the American model to our detriment. Yeah. So I think that funding situation is not good. Uh, there's still a lot of production around town, but it's really hard. It's getting harder and harder for people to establish long-term careers and for companies to establish long track records. Yeah. Even people with long track records, like Ruby Slippers. How often is Ruby Slippers producing now? And that's an important company. That's been an important mm -hmm. company around town. The Playhouse is typically up for a number of reasons but I think that the funding situation is dire that said I think there's a really healthy especially alternative theater scene in Vancouver there's a, a really hip smart audience that is being well served by alternative companies like Boca de Lupo and theater replacement and electric company so I think there's a lot of interest there yeah. yeah. What is the greatest love you have about going to the theater? What, uh, we'll wrap up there because our salad is waiting. <laughs> and you can't stay for the salad. Um, what is, what it's, do you it's love personal. When you it's personal. I mean, we, we go to the theater, we close our eyes, or we don't, we don't close our eyes. We go to the theater, and in the dark, we let go of our public selves and open ourselves to larger selves. Yeah. Which I find very moving. Because I think we um, we let go of the kind of the limiting armor of personality and say, okay, I'm bigger, I'm more complex, I'm more fucked up, I'm more beautiful than I let happen, than I let myself acknowledge in my day to day life. I am, you know, as big as all of these people that I'm seeing. Yeah, I I, I love sitting in the theater and having that connection with yeah. all the people. Yeah. we are all here. We're not even talking to each other, but we're all part of this experience, and yeah. the actors are connecting to each other and sending back, and that, yeah, that's so thrilling. Yeah, it's about compassion. I mean, it really is. It's about it's fundamentally about compassion. Like as as an actor, uh, if you don't have compassion to a character for for your character, you're going to do a really bad job of playing that character. Mm -hmm. And so you start to understand, I think, as an actor, that everybody is doing the best they can, mm -hmm. and the best the best might not be. A, impressive if you're yeah. looking at that character or that person from the outside but every character and every human being in the world is doing the best they can right nice and we've done the best we can here <laughs> yeah, but now we're and, hungry and now we'll eat our salad <laughs> so thank you so much for being my first non theater uh, culture vulture talk you, you broke pleasure. me in pleasure let's have some salad thank you hey baby Mmm, lovely. <laughs> Can't catch. <laughs> Look at that.